What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word The Godfather? Well, uh, for starters, it's one of my favorite movies. And yeah, that dialogue, I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Wow, that sums it up. Back in 2014, one of my favorite colleagues and friends, Josh Burke, made an offer which today more than 5 million people across the world can't resist and refuse. The trailhead. The revolution in the world of learning. Back in those days when Josh found it out, this is how it used to look like and it was called as medals. Thank you, Josh, for this precious gift. Over the course of the show today, we're going to talk more about Trailhead and its facts. It's now time for a quick tip. If you are working with lighting web components, then you must be familiar with the lifecycle hooks, connected callback and disconnected callback. Connected callback, as you know, is called whenever your component is added to the DOM and disconnected callback is called whenever your component is removed from the DOM. But when exactly is a component removed from the DOM? Let's see that. So here is a simple component which just has console log statements in each of the hooks. To conditionally render this component, I put it inside the template if true in the hello conditional rendering recipe. Now back in the org, if I click on this checkbox, notice the component is shown and the connected callback is called. And when I uncheck this box, the component is removed from the DOM and disconnected callback is called. This is how it works, nothing new here. But now let me add this component directly to a record page. So let me put this inside a sub tab and now when I load the contact detail page, notice there are no logs yet. Why? Because one very important thing about lighting experience and in turn your app record and home pages is that they're optimized for performance. So the component doesn't load unless I click on the sub tab in which it is present and you immediately see the connected callback log. Now watch what happens when I click away from this tab. Nothing. Disconnected callback is not called. Now if I go back to the sub tab, you can see the component is still there, but connected callback is also not called again. This is because your component was technically never removed and re-added to the DOM. It was always there when you navigated away. It's just hidden. This is again for performance. Now let me go to a different tab. The tab loads, but your disconnected callback is still not called. Another tab, still not called. Now why is this? This is because the standard navigation keeps the five previous pages you've visited alive. Meaning that they are still in the background, but they are not technically removed. They are only hidden from you. And why do we do this? We do this for performance reasons and for instant backward navigation. So if I click on back, it instantly shows the previous page without any loading and stuff like that. Now, since the page in which your component is present was alive in the background and was not removed from the DOM, your disconnected callback was never called. So let me now navigate to three other tabs. And the moment I navigate to the sixth page, the first page is removed from the DOM and now you can see the disconnected callback is now called. Why is knowing this important? Now imagine this scenario. In connected callback, you've called a set interval function that does something every one second. And in these cases, you use the disconnected callback to clear the interval or stop polling. But the actual behavior is that your component doesn't stop polling even if you navigate away. So because of this, you might run into issues like your session not timing out, limits, and so many more. So how do you stop this polling whenever your user navigates away into a different sub tab or tab? Here is one solution. You can check for the height and width of the element inside your template. If the div is shown to the user, it returns some height and width. If not, the height and width is zero. So I can use this logic 
to check if my component is shown in the DOM and if not I can stop the polling accordingly. Now this is one problem and one of the many solutions to that problem. So let me know what problems that you have faced and what is the solution that you have applied using the comment section of this video. But the key takeaway of this tip is that lighting experience does a lot to improve performance. So whenever you are implementing something, it's best if you check when your method is being called or not and then implement your logic accordingly. Did you know Trailhead badges have a weekly release cadence? We roll out new badges or retire existing ones every Wednesday. With Slack acquisition now complete, on 21st July, we've rolled out a whole new set of Slack badges, like Slack plus Salesforce for the future of work, where you're going to learn all about how both of these technologies can help you grow your business. There are many more new badges like Slack for sales, Slack for service, Slack for marketing, and so on. I've completed all of them. Have you? Let us know in the comments section. I'm pretty sure each one of us is very familiar with the Trailhead logo. It's beautiful, but do you know what it tells? The blue sky represents imagination. The blue cloud is the Salesforce logo. The green grass is for prosperity and opportunities. The purple mountains are for goals. And there is also a white S-shaped trail, which again represents Salesforce. And there is a ribbon around the word Trailhead, which again represents achievements. There are 18 super badges, 11 for Salesforce admins, 5 for Salesforce developers, and 2 super badges for Salesforce consultants currently. Can you guess which super badge has most points? And also let us know how many super badges have you completed in the comment section below. Today I am going to show you how to create the lighting web component, how to expose it to the lighting app builder how to enable it for the lighting record page, home page and lighting app page and also how to create the properties and make them available in the lighting app builder. Wait, do you think that you already know all of these things and why I am saying that it is a tip? Fair enough, I am going to show you how to do all of these things in a single step. Alba Rivas and Kotaro Nishino have built a VS Code extension called LWC Builder. This extension helps you to create and configure lighting web components files easily. You can find the open source repository of this extension as developer force slash LWC builder. You can download the extension VSIX file from this repository. Now let's go to the VS code editor. We can generally install the extension from the marketplace. Today we'll install this extension from the command palette as we have the VSIX file with us. You can see that it has installed the extension. Now let's check how it works. Open the command palette and type open LWC builder. It launches the LWC builder tool. Give a name for your component and choose the API version. You can also select the expose checkbox to make it available in app builder. Now you can select whatever files you want to create. I'll choose HTML. Notice that the JavaScript file and the metadata file are required hence created automatically. We can fill in other options but before that let's see how it's coming up. You can see that it has generated a preview for the HTML file, JavaScript file and metadata file. In the metadata file you can notice that it has set is exposed to true. Let us now add a test file. You can notice that it will be creating a test file in the underscore underscore test underscore underscore folder. Let us open the test file and you can see that it has created a boilerplate code for us. Is it not amazing? You can also select where to use the component and form factors. You can also add the properties that can be exposed in App Builder.
As we added the record page, we can also choose the objects for which this component will be available. Let's now create it. Did you notice that it has created the component and decorated the property we have defined with at API? And also you can see that it has created all the files that we have selected in the file explorer. A fun factor about this extension is its user interface is created using LWC OSS. To learn more about creating the extension, you can watch this video on the YouTube Salesforce Developers channel. Would you please let us know if you like the tip? And also let us know if you want a specific tip in the comment section. We'll be very happy to do it. If you want to access all the technical content that has been shared as part of the episode today, please click on this link and you will have access to the Trail Mix. In the last seven years, Trailhead has become a revelation and has transformed into a powerful learning platform. I mean, it's got content for all kinds of personas in various forms. Modules, projects, quick starts, super badges. While modules, projects and quick starts handhold you and make you understand the basic features and functionalities of Salesforce, super badges throw you a challenge. You have an adventure to conquer because there is no hand holding over here and it is a great opportunity for you to put your learnings into use on a business scenario, a real world business scenario. If you have completed all the super badges, you are standing out in the crowd because there are very few people who've completed all of them. On that note, hope you have enjoyed yet another round of knowledge, inspiration and fun. Until next time, stay safe, write code and do good. This is Kiran signing off with love.